Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. We are very pleased to have you with us on today's adventure, which is going to be forging some new territory. As many of you know, I'm working on a new bread book and it has just taken me in so many different directions. I have been looking for a really good recipe for potato bread that I can modify for use with food storage ingredients and off-grid cooking. In that search, I came across on um, King Arthur's website, which is one of my favorite places to go for recipes, a recipe for, are you ready for this? Sour cream chives potato bread and rolls. I'll tell you, I couldn't resist it. Now, I'm not going to be including that one in our book uh, because, of course, that is copyrighted by uh, King Arthur. But we're going to make it today to see how it is. And for an added benefit, we are going to be using home canned potatoes. Now, why might we want to add potatoes to any kind of bread dough ever? Well, the answer is because of the starch. Uh, potatoes are a high starch vegetable along with sweet potatoes. So anytime we add either of those ingredients to our bread, we are adding additional starch. Now the benefit of that is starch is a sponge for moisture. So it soaks up extra moisture in the, flour, in the uh, dough and makes a very soft and tender crumb. Potato bread is just fantastic. And so that's why we're gonna do it. And um, so here we go. Now, one of the things uh, we're also doing with these home canned potatoes is um, I had several suggestions from people when we were uh, doing our previous video on using, now I'm just gonna put this in the sink and get these potatoes out. Um, and, oh, and by the way, if you haven't seen a couple of our um, earlier videos this week, um, we are now in our kitchen that has been slightly remodeled, well, majorly remodeled, and our refrigerator is now in place. So I'm going to just put these into this strainer. One of the things that I learned from our community was when we did this video on using home canned potatoes, we made mashed potatoes, but I couldn't get the lumps out. And so several people suggested, you need to rice them. So I'm just gonna rinse these. And I'm gonna leave them in here to drain for a minute. And I'm going to be using this OXO food mill. And ricing potatoes, for those of you that may not know, means just simply putting them through a food mill and put them, putting them in really tiny pieces. So I'm gonna try this mill to see if it's going to work. I need a heaping cup of mashed potatoes. Now, what other options might there be for mashed potatoes? It is possible that you can use your regular mashed potatoes left over from Sunday dinner or however you do it. You can use instant mashed potato flakes, but mix them up into the um, hydrated mashed potatoes. Or you can do what I'm doing, which is to use um, home canned potatoes. And some of you have other ways of making them nice and soft. This is, when we use them in bread, this is a time when we really do not want them to be all lumpy. So it's a good, it will be good to get these completely riced so that they will not have and add any lumps to our potatoes. So I'm gonna continue doing this and we'll be back when I am completely done with having these potatoes riced. So here is our heaping cup of mashed potatoes and it worked out just fine. I am doubling this recipe because I'm going to make one loaf of the sour cream chive potato bread and then I'm going to make six great big sandwich buns. Now that Jim and I are both retired, lunch has become a thing for us. And so these will be used with, for, by us for our lunches. Now also, I am trying to improve my processing just a little bit. 
I have a new kitchen scale. This is it. I still have my old one. Um, I've had so many people ask me about my old one, and I can't even read the brand name on it anymore. It's as old as the hills. So I thought, um, I'm just going to get a new one so that if people ask, I can tell you what this is. This is an e eTexity, and um, it will be in our Amazon it will be in our Amazon store, and it's like $13. I went to the lower end of this. You can get them a whole lot more expensive, but this one works just great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on, and then um, I'm going to put my mixing bowl on the scale, hit that button again to zero it out. And this recipe, I'm not going to give the ingredient amounts um, except for the flour. I'll tell you the flour is going to be 720 grams. When you work with King Arthur recipes, it is critically important that you weigh your flour. I'm going to be doing on um, Monday, the Micro Moment Monday, is going to be an explanation of uh, some things that I have learned about measuring flour accurately. And I'll tell you what the deal is with King Arthur recipes. So, I can go ahead and start, um, okay, it's zeroed out. I need 720 grams of this flour, so I'm just going to start putting it in. I'm up to 517. Okay, now I can put this on. This is my anchor shroom. I'm going to put the scraper on and the roller. The roller will be in the center because I'm in mixing phase. And then I'm going to tighten it up there for the center. And putting in the rest of the ingredients. And these can just go in in any order. You just plop everything in there. This is some butter. Again, the link for the recipe will be at the bottom of the video. Here's our potatoes, our one cup of mashed potatoes, two cups of sour cream, Here's salt, sugar, yeast, and some chives. These chives were fresh cut this morning from our herb garden. And that is it. Okay, we're going to just now start mixing. All right, as you can see, um, you could probably tell how dry the mix was. This recipe does not call for any liquid. The sour cream and the mashed potatoes provide the liquid for this recipe, and my mashed potatoes were pretty dry. And so I have added a half a cup of water to get it going, and I think that that is just about right. Boy, it sure smells good. So I think our mixing is just about done. We need to turn it over to kneading. So I'm going to move the arm over to the side of the bowl right here. And then turn the speed up. And there we have our kneading. So we will let this go for probably about eight minutes. Setting it for eight minutes, we'll see how it does. I will monitor this. You don't ever walk away leaving it kneading because you want to know by looking at the dough when it's actually ready and it may or may not be eight minutes. So we'll come back when the kneading phase is finished. This is our dough. It is very sticky and uh, the recipe says that it's going to be sticky, but I'm not sure it's supposed to be this sticky. So I'm going to turn it out on our countertop. We're going to knead it just a little bit more maybe need some more flour into it and go from there. All right, so let's see how this does. 
It's very, very soft. And I can knead it just fine with a little bit of a flour coating on the outside. So I think we're good. Wow, it's soft. It's beautiful. Okay. I'm going to put it to rise in this Cambro container because I can monitor. So here are the measurements on the side of the Cambro container. I'm gonna kind of mash it down all the way around. The recipe says that it does not need to be double in size, but it should be very puffy. So we're gonna watch this closely for the next little while, let it proof, and then we'll come back and shape it. So we'll see you then. Well, as you can see, our bread has doubled in size. It's still very soft. And I'm gonna just turn it out on this flour. And um, that came out easy. Then I'm gonna turn my scale on. I wanna weigh to see how much we're working with here. All right, about 1800 grams. So I'm going to try to cut it in half. See if we can get close. Okay, we are close enough. So this is the one that I'm going to shape into the loaf of bread. And I have my five by nine pan ready here. So the way I am shaping bread these days, because I often will change my technique when I learn new things, is I'm um, putting it into kind of a rectangle here. And then I'm going to be rolling it up. And I pull it, I roll and then pull it back a little bit to put tension across the top. It just makes for a better rise. When there is a bit of tension across the top, it makes it smooth. Uh, we have uh, lumps in there with the chives, so it's not going to be perfectly smooth, but smooth enough. Okay, and then with the seam underneath, I'm going to put it in this pan. And then I'm going to smash it down, try to get it over into the corners. Trying to equalize the dough side to side. And then I'm just going to put it in this plastic bag. <coughs> And we will let this have its final proof until it's about an inch above the sides. I'm going to be making some buns. What's six into 900? Hey Siri, what is, what is 900 divided by six? 900 divided by six is 150. Okay. That would be right. That would be right. Okay, so. We're going to shoot for about 150 grams each then, and uh, we'll see how close we can get. Okay, so we have our buns that are close to 150 each. So what I'm going to do now, this technique for making round buns is a good one. I've used it a lot, so I am just bringing the dough around to the center, poking everything in, and then I just put it under my hand and go in a circle. And it gets a pretty nice circle doing it that way. And I'm just gonna put it right here.
All right, now that these are here, I'm just going to take the flat part of my palm right here and just flatten. Make these into buns. Large sandwich buns. This smell is fantastic. Jim has commented on it a couple of times. I'm walking past this dough. Okay, and we'll cover these and let them get a little bit puffy. We will come back and show you what they look like when everything is proofed, and then shortly after that, we'll get them in the oven. I can't wait. See you then. We just found a pair of stellar blue jays out in our tree, and so that's so fun. We usually don't see those around here, so that was kind of fun. So let's check our bread and see how we're doing. So this is holding it up to eye level. It is an inch above the edge of the pan, so it should be about ready. But let's check. I'm going to depress this little corner right here. If it bounces back fast, it's not ready. But if it comes back slowly, then it's ready to go in the oven. So here we go. All right, so that was very slow. That is ready to go in the oven. Let's check our buns. Oh, yes. All right, so we are going to put these in the oven at 350. And it will probably take 20 to 30 minutes for the buns and then 30 to 40 minutes for the bread. So we, we will come back when we are taking them out of the oven so we can see the results. Here I come with the bread. Look at that. Is that just gorgeous? Look at these buns. I brushed the buns with butter. I'm not gonna brush the bread with butter. I want that crust. So there's the backside. And here it is. It's just, oh, it just smells heavenly. Okay, so I think we'll let this cool for a few minutes and be back, show you the crumb. And then if these have cooled, as soon as these cool enough, Jim and I are going to have a little bit of late lunch. And uh, so we will be back when these have cooled. Oh, you should be here in this house. It just smells like sour cream and chives. So we'll see you soon. As you can see, there are only four buns left. <laughs> so Jim and I succumbed to the temptation to go ahead and cut them while they were still just a little bit warm. We had some leftover corned beef. We've been having Reuben sandwiches in celebration of the middle of March holiday, St. Patrick's Day. And uh, so we had a little bit of that beef left and we had wonderful sandwiches. These are just about the best homemade buns I've ever made. They are delicious. The bread is so soft. Didn't you think, Jim? Yes. Just yes? Don't you want to embellish a little bit? Yes, they were soft and delicious and <laughs> smelled good. All the chives and the butter and the potato. <laughs> Even flour. <laughs> Sour cream. Sour cream. <laughs> so let's cut this I'm bread. The restaurant. <laughs> let's cut this bread and see what the crumb looks like. It has cooled, so we're okay to go ahead and do this now. So here is what it looks like. Oh my gosh. This is phenomenal bread. So I just have to take a little taste of this corner just plain because the roll had all the other sandwich stuff on it it is almost melt in your mouth very very soft moist it is delicious so we have a real winner here um, I was I was thinking that um, these might be a little bit large and so next time I might make eight instead of six. But after having a sandwich with these, I think I will leave them at six because boy, does it make a great sandwich. So that was our experiment for potato bread for this time around. And I will put the recipe. It's a, it is a King Arthur recipe. The only thing that I would suggest is that be sure to weigh the flour. If you measure it out in cups, 
your flower measurement is going to be a little bit off. And I'm going to explain that in um, Monday's micro moment, how to measure flower correctly. So we'll talk about that just a little bit more. And then um, it's probably a good idea when you're mixing not to add any more water or any more flour until you have mixed for a few minutes until you see how sticky it is. If it's a little bit too sticky, you can add a little bit more flour. If it's too dry like mine was, then you can add a little bit of water. So um, this bread is fantastic and I hope that you all try it. And that's potato bread with chives and sour cream. It couldn't be more delicious. So thank you for being with us on this fantastic adventure and we will see you at our next video.